brand new trading week and the benchmark looks poised to hit the ground running. So the question is, is this going to be a good time for scooping up bargains or a time for profit taking? Here for some insights is April Lee Tan. She's the head of research at Cole Financial. April, welcome. Good to have you as always. Um, so I would say in general, sentiment has been largely positive for the PSEI, mm -hmm. for the benchmark index. After the big Fed decision, actually, if you take a look at where the index is sitting right now, mm -hmm. closed up just nine tenths of a percent um, on Friday, but at least it's sitting above 7,300. We'll get to yes. this chart in a short while that's looking at valuations. I want to know, do you think this is just a relief rally or are these sustained gains? Well, um, actually, we talked about our year-end targets and, and it's around, you know, 7,500. So in light of that, we're actually close to it. Um, although we've seen a little bit of good news, um, you know, I don't think it's enough yet at this stage for us to re-rate upward still. I mean, a lot of the concerns are still there and, of course, I mean, showing this uh, chart of yours, <laughs> we're, we're not cheap at this stage. I'm glad you made that segue for me. Thank you very much. Where is the piece? Yeah, that's yes. it right there at the last bar on, the, on my right, 19.19 uh, mm -hmm. times forward earnings. Um, compare that to say, I would say a developed market like the Straits Times Index in Singapore, which is at around 13 times forward mm -hmm. earnings. So this is the basis for saying that yeah. local stocks are still expensive. Yeah. I mean, I think if we look at ourselves, definitely, I think we deserve to trade more than 13 times. But um, looking at historical, I think we should be, for, for us to think that it's more attractive, We'd like it somewhere closer to say 16 times, uh, 15 times, somewhere there. Not, uh, not 19 times because of course we know that this year will be a challenging year for the market. Corporate earnings, do they not justify these numbers? These I mean, not, not this year. Um, I think for this year we're only expecting an EPS growth of around 7%. So if you have a 7% EPS growth and 19 times PE, that's quite expensive because 7% is similar to a developed economy growth at least this year. So maybe next year we'll see some uh, faster growth and then, yeah, that will justify higher valuations. Your assessment is actually more or less in line with what Credit Suisse is saying that, and they forecasted that the benchmark index will underperform uh, GDP, underperform rather yes. this year compared to the rest of the region because EPS growth will lag that of yes. GDP. What could be a positive catalyst here? Um, we're actually most excited about the tax reform program. Um, I mean, of course, it will, for example, allow the government to spend more on infrastructure, which, you know, for last year, it boosted GDP growth quite a bit. Um, and aside from that, we'll see a lot of uh, individuals getting a tax cut, and that would increase their spending power. So that, we believe, will trickle down to corporate earnings growth and, you know, um, lead to some positive surprise and maybe another you know the next leg of this bull market well that is if they pass the tax reform bill yes, in time yes. um this it's also a big bsp decision this week mm -hmm. uh governor tatanko has already said that he's not looking to tweak policy settings anytime soon even given uh, even in light of what the fed had said about three rate hikes this year take a look at where we're sitting right now benchmark is still at three percent lending three and a half overnight and triple r still at two and a half and twenty percent respectively growth though we take a look at it gdp growth for the philippines expected to remain robust thanks mm -hmm. to consumer spending and inflation that's a worrisome indicator yeah. right now is accelerating should they stand pat well, I think they still have room to to uh, keep rates as it, as it is. I mean, even though inflation has picked up, it is well within their um, expectation. So in light of that, there is, you know, they can afford to wait a little bit. Not too long, though, because we do know there's a big leadership transition coming down the path in mm -hmm. uh, at the BSP. April, uh, we talked about um, valuation still being a concern for some of these blue chips. What do you like, though? What would you add positions in at the moment? Yeah, um, some banking stocks, uh, for example, we like Metro Bank. Um, it's been sold down quite a bit uh, due to their, you know, uh, somewhat weaker than expected 2016 earnings. Um, um, then, of course, we like... Uh, well, some, somewhat controversial, we like Semirara. <laughs> uh, but then th their mining operations were not suspended anyway. Um, and uh, coal prices are recovering, so that's good for them. And we see insiders buying that stock. And some gaming companies, which are 
also somewhat controversial because people don't like them and yet they're overlooking the fact that earnings and gaming is actually recovering at this point. When you point say gaming, time. you're talking about casinos, brick yeah, and mortar casinos, casinos yes. not the online operators yes. like Philweb. Yes, the casinos like MCP. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because we just got a note from City saying that uh, names like, well, travelers particularly mm -hmm. might come under pressure later this year. Are you bullish on yeah. the entire sector or are you just bullish on particular names in the gaming industry? Well, for, for RWM, we, we also like them. It's just that, of course, in terms of the location, it's not as attractive as, as say, City of Dreams and um, uh, Bloomberry resorts. Uh, so we feel like it won't take advantage as much and say if Okada really ramps up, it will be the most negatively affected because of location and they don't have plans to open the Bayshore yet. So, so yeah, we prefer those that are in the entertainment city. Um, and yeah, although we quite recognize that Okada is, um, you know, ramping up, um, but then, you know, we had a glimpse of the MCP earnings through the parent company, which disclosed already in, in, uh, in, Hong Kong. in Hong Kong. And it was good, despite Okada being there. Um, we feel, you know, I mean, it was different when uh, City of Dreams opened. There were just two players. So the cannibalization was much more significant versus, say, a fourth player coming in and three existing. And it's actually good that they're coming in slowly rather than, you know, one big, you know, the grand opening. <laughs> so at least it gives the existing players time to, you know, protect their market share and the mar market grab Roll is out new services perhaps. Yes, yes. All right, so in the gaming counter, I guess it, location is still the yes, number one yes. factor. All right, we're going to have to leave it there, April Lee Tan, head of research at Cole Financial. Thanks for your time yeah, thank today. You.